what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it, and uh, we hope you enjoy the- Let's get Let's get to football recruiting. As uh, DeCorian Moore was in town this weekend. Of course, uh, you probably know about DeCorian Moore, number one receiver in the country, number three overall, number one player out of Texas, was committed to LSU, decommitted. LSU was completely off the list. They managed to get back in for an official. The official happened this last weekend, and apparently went really well. Here's some quotes from Marjan Moore, um, who's DeCorian's mother, uh, saying, quote, very intimate, family-oriented, and intentional. Intentional, good word. It was great connecting with new people and reconnecting with others. It was much needed. You can't deny the vibes, and there's so much love shown. Baton Rouge locals and LSU staff uh, came back and checked Mama's boxes. Solo official visits are the new wave. It's so funny here. Um, adults like that sound younger because they're just my age. Uh, solo official visits are the new wave, and more families should do it when you need focus, not just entertainment. Um, DeCorey Moore himself would say they are back in the picture now. After the visit, they showed me a lot. One of the key things I wanted to see was life after football, how they take care of their athletes, how to set them up for success after football. Being that they showed me all of that, I would say they are back in the picture. They jumped right back in it, actually. I wouldn't say they're behind or in front, but they definitely showed me some <laughs> things I'd be looking for in other schools, like connections. How could they help me build connections with big businessmen and people around the city? How big the LSU name holds the city of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and how much of an impact schools have on where they are. Okay, so a couple of things here. Uh, first, whew, this boy's talented, but it's just feeling a little high maintenance right here. I mean, you know, this is, uh, is you better be able to look. It's okay to date someone who high maintenance, but you better be willing to pay for the manis, the petties, and everything else that goes along with it. Maybe some gifts every now and then, a little personal jewelry, whatever. Um, this also feels like somebody who would hit the transfer portal in a second if 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 they're not uh happy. That said, maybe the more interesting conversation for our show is that last part that he's talking about, life after football. What where where is it better? Because no doubt a school like Texas has more economic opportunity post football than Louisiana State does at least. But is being a Texas football player as big of a deal as being an LSU football player? Maybe it is. I'm not saying either way. What do y'all think? I'm saying no. Do you think I, no? I say this all the time. And, and anytime that I go, you know, speak with official recruits that are on their visit, whatever, it's just different because every single state that you're fighting against has, mul- like, Mississippi, multiple schools, Alabama, multiple schools, Florida, multiple schools, South Carolina, multiple schools. Like, even Georgia has Georgia Tech. Right, yeah. Texas has a thousand. It feels like, yeah. right. So if you're, you know, a Texas football player, but you're in Dallas, what does that mean? If you're a Texas football player and you're in San Antonio, what does that mean? True. But if you're an LSU football player and you're in Tree Fort, Monroe, New Orleans, Lafayette, wherever, that holds the heaviest weight. Yeah. Nobody else really has that. Not Arkansas, maybe, but Arkansas doesn't even, you know, put football as their most important sport. So I still think I still maintain that Georgia Tech's irrelevant. I maintain that Georgia and Ohio State have that. Georgia, and they're the other two major ones. Right. Well, I'm do. talking about this, you know, here yeah, in this yeah, portion here of the, the country. South, yeah. I mean, but still, yeah, I agree with you what Georgia's done. But like Georgia Tech won a national championship in the early 90s. So Rambling like, wreck. You know, there's some relevance yeah. there. Now, Georgia can sell it probably better than they ever could before. But like, that's what you have here. Like, if you're an LSU football player, it doesn't matter where you go in the state of Louisiana, that's the most important thing. Like I would, I would say, like even it beats the pro team. Like even, like if you're think about this, and I might be wrong, I might be way off here. Like Joe Burrow in Louisiana, Drew Brees in Louisiana. Mm, I don't know. That's a tough one to score. I don't. uh. All right, is there anywhere else that that would even be like a debate? No, no. To be fair, no, no. To be fair, it, it would have to be like. If Matt Ryan had won the Super Bowl, to go back to the George example, I feel I feel like Stetson Bennett would probably still have more cachet than Ryan. But then again, I feel like the Louisiana kind of carries would it, as a whole. Would, would more he the Mike? Would the he the Mike Vick? Uh, like Stetson or Vick? Yeah. Oof. 
throughout the entire state. Because, like, no doubt New Orleans is breeze, right? But throughout the entire state, it's tougher because, like you're saying, you're kind of unified a bit more top to bottom under the banner of LSU, whereas I know a lot of my 318 brethren who are Cowboys fans. Or, Don't put that on us. Put that on I, that man I right there a lot. in front I did, of you. I didn't, I didn't say everybody. That man right there in front of you. I didn't the say two, everybody. Two, I did not say you. And there's a lot of um, uh, people in, in South Louisiana who are – fans of other NFL teams as well, for sure. I, I just I kind of agree with the with the sentiment that maybe it is a bit more united to the state. So 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 you do but you do believe that like maybe like in terms of importance of playing football and what it could mean for like people giving a damn about who you are, that the kind of big fish in a little pond of Louisiana is uh potentially better than than the kind of I think big so. fish in a big pond. I think so. Yeah, I just, I mean, I've experienced it. I mean, again, I think I agree with that. I just, you know, we're probably, I'm probably biased a bit. But yeah, I feel like, because I've experienced it as well, right? Obviously. And like, to to your point about Ohio State kind of being in the same category, they are because like, it's a <sighs> massive state. That's crazy. That loves their football in Ohio State. Like, the, sure, there's, at, you know, Ohio University in Athens, but they're in the MAC. Ohio State in Cincinnati, like, those are great. That's, that's cool. But it's the Buckeyes. Yeah. And Bobby, I mean, Bobby's the mayor of Columbus, yeah. right? Like those yeah. things, like, does that, that doesn't happen everywhere. No. I got, I've got friends that play quarterback at some of the biggest schools that in, in the Pac-12 and it didn't matter. No. Like just did no, not Pac-12 is the worst for this conversation. Yeah. You don't want, you don't want to go, if you go to a Pac-12 school, you're going to be quickly forgotten. Um, see, if you go to LSU, you're going to people ask you for 15 years about snapping the ball against Tennessee in 2009. Yeah. Uh, I'll take it. As an O-lineman, we'd love to see it. Um. Uh, for what this is worth, DeCorey Moore is going to visit Texas, Ohio State, and Oregon in the coming weeks. I don't. I have. I have no expectation when it comes to Moore. I'm glad the visit went well. Um, I'm glad that OV solos are the move. But I, I'm just gonna sit back and wait and see. Because even if he signs and comes here, I'm still not convinced that he won't be gone in like six months. Like yeah. I don't. I, 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 th- I think to. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what A.O. Mayer told uh, Aragorn, Gimli, and Legolas. Uh, Do not trust to hope. It is forsaken in these lands. Um, but you know what? It ended up kind of working out for Aragorn, Gimli, and Legolas, so maybe it can work out here as well. Look, there is a point where, and, and I know recruiting resources aren't a, a problem, but I'm talking about just the time portion of the recruiting resources. Like, There's other five-star receivers that have LSU on their top whatever list. So... Like, is there a point eventually where you're like, okay, hey, this is our pitch. Like, here's yeah. here's who yeah. we are. Yeah. And we'd love for you to join us. But also, like, there's other players that maybe they're not to the level. Maybe they're right underneath the level of player that more is. But like, hey, we're gonna um we're gonna put these resources into these fellas. It does kind of it does kind of make you wonder, uh, because as in, he's obviously an elite talent. Um but is it almost like, or are you almost going for as much of a symbolic win as well? Because there was something really overwhelmingly strong about being able to say we have the number one quarterback, number one running back, and number one wide receiver all committed at the same time. Yeah, like that. That that there's that's pretty absurd. So maybe they're chasing that. But yeah, uh, that, that's a great point, Jake. I'm I'm not I'm not sure. So we'll we'll continue to watch it. Wow, Jake. What incredible takes. I mean, those guys, they're just the best. Uh, I think so. And if you think so, again, hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications we post every single day here on OTB LSU.